the dark man in the corner up there. Uh, we're learning about loop statements. We just did the for statement without any conditions, but loops have, there's going to be four, and then there's going to be an uh, initializer, there's going to be a condition, and there's going to be a post, and then your code. And so what that looks like is four, uh, and I've initialized i already up here. I'm going to make this x, just because i is the traditional. And I'm going to use it down here, and I don't want to redeclare it. And that's all in the same scope. For i, colon equal zero, semicolon, i less than 100, semicolon, i plus plus. And, uh, and then thump.println i. And uh, I'm going to pull these out into functions, just separate them a little bit. So the first one would be for func foo. And the next one would be func bar. And we'll put this in foo. And now they have separate scopes, so they could be they could all be i. And we'll make this one um, i minus minus. And if x equals uh, zero break. We'll have this one start out at 100. It's I. There we go. And so we could call foo. Call bar. Went really fast. Started out as 100, counted down to. Uh, one, and then it started out as zero, printed that, and counted up to 99. We can make that less than or equal. So that's uh, the basic for statement. And uh, we can look at both the Golang spec to read about it, see if there's any examples in there. There's for range, which we'll learn about in uh, next video, um, or we'll learn about it soon. We'll learn about some of these data structures, and uh, and then we'll also look here for init condition post for condition. So this is another one we can look at. So just leaving in the condition or just for infinite, right? Leaving out those. And so here's uh, init condition post, and then here's the range. We'll see what range is in a bit. Well, let's try the um, for condition. So uh, what do you do besides foo and bar? What's another function name? Anybody? All I could think of was monkey. Monkey works. Huh? Monkey works. Monkey works. Funk monkey. And uh, we're going to have a for. And we need some condition. Uh, I is less than 100. And then we could just code that, right? We could have i colon equals 0. And, uh, and then we could do thump.println i and i plus plus. So that's kind of similar to, you know, all of the above if you compare those. So the first one is, you know, the condition is here, right? Like, when do I leave? When are we done? That's the condition. And here's the post, the incrementer, the decrementer, you know? And then here's our output, and it's just four. And, uh, and here's our init. So it's like all the pieces are there, just in different places. And here is our init. Here's our condition. Here's our post. And then here's our init. Here's our condition. Here's our post. 
right? They're all kind of three different ways of doing the same thing. Does that make sense? And uh, and now this one's going to do its deal too. So watch that run. And so there's that last one. We have up to a hundred, and then up to a hundred again, and then it was coming down from a hundred. So those are the three. But you could use these in different situations. For instance, in in like you know TCP package, you might use four as a listener to continually listen over an open connection. And then when it receives an incoming request to deal with that, pass it on to some routine, and then let the for loop just keep always listening. It's just always listening to the open connection. Is there an incoming request? And that for loop is always just looping over it and ready to pass off any incoming request. So that's, uh, that's for loops. How many people that's new for you? Raise your hand. Okay, cool. You want to try coding some? <laughs>